Well, we have uh, Talbot then. Uh, you mentioned that figure of about 77,000 acres that he had. <laughs> uh, but he, uh, he was, in theory, got 200 acres for each settler he put on a lot. And he put them on the lots in Yarmouth and Southwold and some in Dunwich, and then he'd take the land in Alburn. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, I, all of a sudden, I think Talbot must have realized uh, he was born in 1771. And by the time the, uh, the uh, colony is going very well, he suddenly realizes, I have no children. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, <laughs> uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, um, that must have been a difficult one for Talbot. Um, he, said that, uh, he said that the only uh, woman that I ever loved was uh, the daughter of Sir John Johnson, and she wouldn't have me. Uh, I'm not sure whether she was half Indian or, yes, or what she so. was. Maybe she was. Um, so he's, he didn't have any family, but he did try to interest his own family in investing in, in that part of the, the country. And they were starting to form little trust companies and, and uh, building societies, as they were called. Um, but he did have a nephew by the name of Airy, Richard Airy, who was married to um, uh, a, a nephew, a niece of, of Colonel Talbot's. And as a matter of fact, Richard Airy's mother was Colonel Talbot's sister. I'll show you a picture of her. She's yeah. rather, rather a pretty lady. Uh, this picture is curled a bit, but I'll just hold it in there for you. You can see um, she's... Uh, there she is. She looks a little bit like Queen Victoria there, but she's... Yeah, she's a beautiful woman, right? She's, yes, she's a lovely girl. And um, when I visited the um, descendants of uh, the Airy family, uh, they had her uh, out over the mantelpiece, and uh, Mrs. Airy's wife was down in the basement because um, she was the ugly one. <laughs> anyway, this girl is, is uh, uh, Catherine, her name and is. And this is the sister of Talbot and this the mother of... Of, Julius of, and Richard Airy. Yes, that's right. And Airy married his first cousin, so there's a lot of yeah. inbreeding there. And mm. Airy, Airy could really have been called um, a Talbot, yeah. um, almost. But anyway, yes, Airy was in Canada and went through more or less the same routine that um, Colonel Talbot had gone through. He served on the, on the staff of the Governor General, who was uh, Lord Aylmer, uh, in Quebec in 1830 to 1832, and he visited Port Talbot at that time. Um, he was a keen woodsman and a very keen horseman and liked the outdoor life. He, liked, he was a physically very, very active man, airy. It must have been in the family because I think Talbot was the same way. And um, uh, he visited Colonel Talbot in 1832, and I suppose they must have had discussions then. And then I think he visited him again in 1838 and yeah. brought his, his, um, his younger brother, Julius Airy, out um, uh, for Colonel Talbot to look over and see whether he thought he, he might um, be a good uh, person for Talbot to settle his inheritance on, because Airy was really quite keen on his army career, and he was doing very well. Um, but Julius Airy was a, a city boy, and yep. um, he didn't like the frontier. He liked the balls and bells. And um, eventually he went back to Ireland and became a very successful lawyer. Um, then Airy, uh, well, can Richard I just interrupt Airy. there. In Julius, really the only good time he had when he was here was when the Harris girls from London came over to pay a visit to Malahide, or he went over to London to see them, and then when the rebellion was on, he served in the, the cavalry and one of the regiments down in Windsor yes, in 1838. Yes, I think he mentioned, there's mention of him serving yeah. with the, uh, the local cavalry, mm -hmm. um, which went from St. Thomas to the frontier. Yes, and they were on duty for uh, two years. Yes, at Fort Malden. Well, they were at Fort Malden, and then they were at London when the trials were on of the people who were tried, you know, Joshua Doan and those yes. people. Yeah. I think they were on duty from uh, uh, January 1840 yeah. to um, uh, or 1838 and 39 until about May 1840. Really, uh, over a two-year period. That yes. uh, 
Now they changed a lot, and uh, Germ but James Ermatinger was the uh, captain of that troop for all that time, and all the pay sheets show him there. Is he the son of Edward Ermatinger? No, he's a uh, nephew of Edward Ermatinger. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I see. He was the son of a, another. Ermatinger, of course, was the uh, Hudson's Bay factor who, yes. who came to yeah. retire in the yeah. Talbot settlement. Was yeah. that yeah. not so? Well, he came really to make his fortune here too, as the same as uh, Talbot did. Well, Julius Airy, let's get back to uh, Talbot, or we'll get in another fascinating character of the family, the Ermatingers. Julius couldn't stand it, and he went back to Ireland. So that was the first effort of Talbot to find an heir. Right. And then uh, I've got here in 1846, he wrote to Richard Airy. Yes. Well, um, Airy, uh, who was in charge of the Western Frontier during the Mackenzie Rebellion, yeah. he was the colonel of the 38th Regiment. Or is it the 34th? Um, and served at Fort Malden. And then when that uh, particular incident was, was uh, cleaned up, uh, he was ordered back to Toronto, and he stayed at, in Toronto, and he was in charge of the troops in Toronto in yeah. some skirmishes that they had there. Uh, John, did he not uh, serve a couple months in St. Thomas? His, oh, his I, regiment? Well, I think his regiment was, was based f in St. Thomas yeah, and went out to the frontier I from see. St. Thomas yeah. rather than London. The yeah. cavalry uh, um, was probably developed from St. Thomas because of Airy's interest, interest mm -hmm. in cavalry, yeah. which is borne out in uh, <laughs> the charge of the Light Brigade. Yes. We'll come to that yeah. soon enough. Well, all right, then Talbot wrote to him in uh, 1846. Now, what was the proposition you made? Well, that's, uh, we haven't got that um, a particular piece of correspondence, but uh, Airy interpreted it as an invitation to come to Port Talbot and be his heir. And um, Airy at the time was in the Mediterranean and uh, on the island of Corfu on, on uh, the, the staff of the, um, of the military governor of Corfu. And uh, he thought about this for a while and um, eventually was posted back to England as qu Assistant Quartermaster General under Lord Wellington, yeah. the Duke of Wellington, mm -hmm. Talbot's friend. Yeah. Um, the Talbot, uh, 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 there was the Duke of Wellington said to Airy, you better go out and see what you can do, but if things don't work out, come on back and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll give you a job again. Um, so in 1848, um, uh, Airy, at on his word, at the invitation of Colonel Talbot, went out to inherit Colonel Talbot's um, lands, and um, he established himself at Port Talbot. Yeah. I understand that first he, he lived in Burwell's old home on Burwell's Corners. Yes. Uh, in 18, I've got him in 1847. Uh, Burwell had died the year before, yeah. and then in 1848 he moved into Talbot's house. Now, uh, I suppose, uh, you know, you invite me to be your heir, and I say, well, okay, and I move out to Malahide, and I suppose I figure I should have some responsibility and take things over, eh? Well, yes, and he, he certainly did take things over, and uh, yeah. Talbot, of course, was pretty old by this time. He was uh, 79 or yeah. 80, and um, he had really pretty well lost control of, of the settlement because it had, everything had been turned over to mm -hmm. the government in York. And all he was really left with was his own personal holdings. And uh, his dealings with various people and the sale of his lands was really what uh, Airy became mm -hmm. uh, involved in. And there, there was a, a bit of a mess um, in, in, those, in his accounts, mm -hmm. as it were. And Airy had to straighten all that out. And of course, Colonel Talbot in his latter life, living out at Port Talbot in a lonely, isolated situation, um, did, uh, became rather a heavy uh, drinker. And um, Airy found this difficult to deal with. And um, uh, Mrs. Airy found it difficult to deal with. And Talbot wouldn't let uh, the Airy family um, change things. Uh, and Airy wanted to th make things more civilized. And of course, he had a family. Um, so really, he, 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 he stayed there for a while, but he didn't get along with Talbot. Yeah, and he eventually yeah. had to make a, an agreement to, to, um, to go back to England. Well, they did have a quarrel. Yes. May. And then Talbot did turn over. Uh, you got something about Well, the there's, there's, uh, there's a sketch. Airy in 1848, Talbot went to England, and Airy uh, stayed on at Port Talbot. 
and uh, started re rebuilding uh, Malahide yeah, yeah. Castle or Malahide House. And um, this is a sketch that I picked up of, of Aries in, in Herefordshire, actually. It shows the, his idea, his little design for the, um, for the rebuilding of Malahide with a new addition on the east end of the, of the house. So that's, um, I don't know whether that turns out very well. Uh, Ari was quite a notable artist. And yes. uh, yeah. there's a recent show at the, um, the Regional Art Gallery yeah. in London with quite a lot of his stuff. Here's another picture. Um, uh, which is current to that that age, uh, and this will be hard to pick out, but it shows Colonel Talbot in his den at Malahide, sitting in front of a table, and there's a chair in the foreground, which is exactly like one that we received to the Elgin County Pioneer <laughs> Museum from the University of um, Western Ontario oh, about 20 years ago, and these are supposedly the maps on the that he kept his records on. And this is quite a famous um, a picture of Colonel Talbot. Uh, there's one, there's a copy of it up in Eldon House. I got this in Herefordshire. This is, this is of the original, which is in Herefordshire. So Airy, Airy was really quite a fair artist, as many British officers were, because they were trained to make uh, drawings, weren't they? Yes. For military purposes. Well, then they had the big argument. And I suppose Mrs. Airy's daughter died, too, didn't she, at Talbot? That's Fort right. Talbot. She was pretty unhappy there yeah. all, all around, yeah. because it was way out in the middle of nowhere. So uh, Airy goes back. Uh, first, Talbot gave him the estate. Uh, should I show you what Airy looks like? Yes, or, we should have a picture. Are we going to get on with that? No, we we'll better have a picture of Richard no. Airy. Yeah. Well, this isn't a picture of him as a young man. This is a picture of him later on in his army career when he's a brigadier general. Um, and he's, he's, his chest is covered with all the um, medals of all the countries in <laughs> the yeah. world. Well, and the, uh, the Crimean War medals here, the four yeah. clasps to yeah. it, too. Well, uh, so Talbot then um, uh, quarreled with Airy, but he gave him half of the property. Yes. Airy went back to England, and uh, then uh, Airy from there resumed his military career, and he went out to the Crimea. Right, yes, that's and, right. And uh, yes, he went out to the Crimea, Crimea in charge of a division. Uh, it was a Balkans campaign, and then yeah. it developed into this expedition to the Crimea to, to uh, strip uh, the, the, the huge uh, naval establishment mm -hmm. that the Russians had built at Sevastopol. Yep. Um, and so when he got out there, the quartermaster general of the British Expeditionary Force, his name was de Ross, General de Ross, who is noted as being the first uh, bather uh, with just a pair of, of shorts on. <laughs> anyway, Lord de Ross went home to England, and Airy took over from him and um, uh, became involved in the administration of that expeditionary force and, and uh, uh, had the distinction uh, of writing out the order for the charge of the Lake Brigade. Of which he got a great deal of criticism, although he had nothing to do with the charge of the Light Brigade. Yes. But he, he wrote out the orders from dictation of Lord Raglan, I guess it was, eh? Yes, that's right. And uh, Lord Cardigan misinterpreted the orders and ordered yeah. them to charge up the valley right into the...